Hello guys! Naimbag nga daw tayo manan kabayan, maayong bundag. Ay lasusilan po ito para sa Nanay's Legacy. Today's episode is very different to our previous videos. Hindi tayo magluluto, hindi tayo maggagala, at hindi rin natin pag-uusapan ang tungkol sa pamilya. Today we're gonna talk about the step-by-step -step process on how I, as an OFW, applied for my 10 years multiple visa to the U.S. And that is the B-1, B-2 visa. What is B-1, B-2 visa? B-1 visa refers to the business tour or any business conference that is going to happen here in the U.S. You have to apply for the B-1 visa. While the B-2 visa refers to the tourism and medical. Kung may mga sakit tayo at gusto natin magpagamot sa US, ito po ang gagamitin natin visa, B2 visa. While ako, uh, ang plano ko ay mag-tourist sa America, so I applied for the B2 visa. So I want uh, to tell you something about my past before I applied for my US visa. I was then working as an OFW in Macau for 14 years. Uh, as a caregiver, I said to myself, I thought of something that, what if I applied also in the U.S.? So the next thing in mind is just, wait, how will I apply for a U.S. visa? There's no U.S. Embassy here in Macau. Where do I go? Will I go back to the Philippines, which is very complicated and it's very hard? or just go to Hong Kong, which is a nearby country and it's only one hour away from us through ferry boat. So I really came to a decision that I'm going to apply for the US visa. So the first thing to do is to research in uh, Google and all my answers were answered in Google and there is where I found out that I can apply online. Aside from Google, I watch a lot of videos in YouTube about the B1, B2 tourist visa. The first thing in mind to research is what are the requirements. First, you should have a valid of six months uh, passport. So, ibig sabihin dapat ang passport mo ay hindi pa expired within six months. And then we have the 160 US dollars for the payment of our application. The next thing is the ID picture two by two white background. So if we completed all the three items that we need for the requirements, then we can go on, uh, fill out the form of DS-160 online. After filling out the DS-160, there will be a portion that it says that you need to upload your ID picture and then submit it to USCIS. After submitting your application, you have to wait for a while. It wouldn't take long that you're going to receive an email from them that they receive already your application and now you're ready to pay for the fee. For the fee, uh, USCIS uh, gave me three options. It says there that I can pay to 7-Eleven Hong Kong branch at 1,280 uh, Hong Kong dollars. And the other one is in 7-Eleven Macau at 1,280 patatas. You can pay in debit or credit card. I chose the 7-Eleven Macau uh, for my payment. And you just need to present this to 7-Eleven and do not throw your receipt because there's a transaction number that you will be needing in time. They're going to send you three months of calendar where you're going to choose the date of your interview. Luckily, uh, my boss gave me three consecutive days of day off. And then I grabbed that opportunity and set my interview. There is one more thing that the US CIS will ask you. How would you like to collect your passport 
if you pass the interview. Is it by mail or pick up? If it is by mail, it will take three to five days. And I cannot do that because I need my passport to go back to Macau from Hong Kong. If it is pick up, I can collect that the next day and then go back to Macau with my passport, which I'm going to present it to the immigration. But first of all, after all those uh, requirements that the USCIS asked me, so I was booked in the hotel for three days and two nights. And since I don't know anything about Hong Kong because I haven't been there, so it's good enough that my uh, son has a friend in Hong Kong. So when I arrived Hong Kong, uh, he took me for a ride going to my hotel. And shout out to Popoy. Hello, I'm here in the US already. <laughs> so I was already in the hotel and have a good rest at night. So I'll be ready for my interview the next day. Uh, seven o'clock in the morning, I went already to the uh, US Embassy, Hong Kong. We waited for a while until it opened. My interview is eight o'clock in the morning. When uh, we are already online going to the first window, the lady asked me about my form. So you're going to present them the your uh, receipt for 7-Eleven MRV, this MRV, and the non, the online non-immigrant visa application DS-160. You have to present this to them and also your appointment confirmation and ID picture again. So I thought everything is okay already until they got to uh, a check on my ID picture. And then she said to me that, oh, I think your ID is not going through with this application. And I was so worried and I got shocked. And then I said, why? I said, did you have your hair cut? And I said, yes, just recently, I said. <laughs> and she said, uh, you, you need to have an ID uh, with your hair cut. And then I said, I don't know anywhere here in Hong Kong, so how can I do that? Uh, can you show me uh, where to go? And she said, it's just around the corner. You can go there and take a picture for yourself. And thanks God, I'm so happy. I'm so glad that I don't need to go out of uh, US Embassy already. So when I got my picture done, I fall in line again and then went to the second window. Then she asked me, what are you going to do in the US? And I said, I'm going to have my holiday season in the U.S. Oh, okay. And then she said, uh, you can go inside already. I'm inside. Uh, we have a line again. And that is our biometric. We have our fingerprints. So after the fingerprint, they uh, asked us to go to the waiting area for the interview. For the interview area, there are three windows, two uh, gentlemen console, and then there's a lady console. So I was praying, oh Lord, please give me the uh, lady console because I can see and I can hear uh, those two gentlemen were so strict and they are denying the applicants. So I was just praying. And it's so lucky enough that she called me. <laughs> And when she said next, I stand immediately and I was smiling because my wish was granted. So when I was in front of her, face to face, eyes to eyes, of course, you should be confident and you should have, a, you know, a very simple uh, casual dress. And then I greeted her, good morning. And she answered me back, good morning. Then she started the question and answer portion. <laughs> the first thing she asked me was, what is your name? 
How old are you? Are you married? How many children do you have? What are you going to do in the U.S.? And I answered her, I'm going to have my holiday season in the U.S. And then she asked me, why, uh, why did you apply here in Hong Kong, not in the Philippines? So I answered her back that I am working in Macau for 14 years already. And the nearest country that I can apply for the U.S. visa is here in Hong Kong. And I said, I seldom go home to the Philippines. So she asked me back, what do you do in Macau? I said, I'm working as a caregiver in an elderly homes in Macau. She asked me, where is the uh, nursing homes? And I said, in Asilo de San Jose. She asked me about, do you have any employment certificate? I said, no, I don't have any employment certificate because my boss is out of the country, but I can present to you my employment contract. And I presented her my employment contract. And she asked me about, do you have any bank statement? I said, I don't have any bank statement, but I can present you four months of my pay slip. And I handed it to her. She asked me about, will your boss allow you to go to the U.S.? And I said, yes because I'm going to use my two weeks to one month uh, annual leave. And then she asked me, since you are living in Macau for 14 years, do you have any assets in Macau? I'm getting more nervous because I cannot present any, anything uh, what she's asking me. I said, I don't have any assets in Macau, but I am renting an apartment in Macau. And then she asked me, can you show me a proof that you're renting a, an apartment in Macau? Then I showed her the house uh, rental contract, which is signed by my landlord and by myself. Then she asked me again, if you are renting a house in Macau, who are you with in Macau? I said, I have my two uh, kids in Macau living with me in the apartment. What do they do? told her that my uh, eldest son is working as a caregiver in a nursing homes for the mentally ill patients. And my other son is working in a hotel as a room attendant. And then she asked me, do you have any relatives in the U.S.? Yes, my daughter is in the U.S. I said, she is employed as a seafarer in the Norwegian cruise line. And she said, oh yeah, that's a good job. Say thank you, and I smiled at her. Do you have any friends or any more relatives in uh, the U.S.? And I said, I have my PNC in the U.S. Where is he in the U.S.? He's in New York. Is he a U.S. citizen? He is. And then the consul asked me, when was the last time I met Brian? And then I said, uh, I met Brian two years ago when he visited me in Macau. Then why did you not apply for the K-1 visa rather than applying for a tourist visa? And I said, I'm not ready yet for the K-1 visa because my annulment is uh, on process. But it is already in our mind to apply that uh, after my annulment is done. And she said, okay, can you show me any documents about him? And I gave her the documents that Brian sent me when I was in Macau. So that was it. And she turned to her computer and typed whatever she's typing, I don't know. And after a few minutes, she faced me again and with a smile and told me, congratulations, your visa is approved was so happy. If only she's near me, I would hug her. <laughs> Ito lang po yun, tatandaan natin, na kailangan mapaniwala natin ang konsul na tayo ay babalik sa ating original place. Which, like me, kailangan kong bumalik ng Macau or kailangan kong bumalik ng uh, Philippines. Because when I presented her yung kontrata ko sa house, 
rental, ibig sabihin kailangan kong bumalik ng Macau kasi meron akong nire-rentang bahay doon na dapat kong tapusin. And when I uh, presented the employment contract, ibig sabihin hindi pa tapos ang kontrata ko sa pagtatrabaho ko kaya kailangan kong bumalik ng Macau para tapusin ang kontrata ko sa trabaho. And the last thing is about my annulment. Kailangan kong bumalik ng Pilipinas because my annulment is on process. Kaya naandun yung three factors na yon na napaniwala ko yung uh, consul. Hindi ako pwedeng magstay ng matagal sa US dahil sa may marami pa akong obligasyon na tatapusin sa Macau or in the Philippines. Yan lang po yun. I just want to point out na ang ibig sabihin ng tourist visa ay binibigyan lang tayo ng Estados Unidos ng duration of stay. So, maybe binibigyan tayo ng 3 months to 6 months and iyon lang ang kailangan nating uh, tapusin. And we have to go back to our original place. And the thing is, it's my experience. Gusto kong ipalala sa inyo, it's my experience at iba-iba naman ang mga konsul kung paano nila tignan ang situation ng bawat isa. So, iyon lang po yung gusto kong ipoint to. Kinaklaro ko lang, it's my experience. Kung ano yung magiging experience ninyo ay iba rin, pa, iba rin sa akin. Ang sa akin lang, I have given you my experience and learned from that. Pero of course, iba-iba yung konsul. Depende sa consul yun na magtatanong sa inyo. Maybe yung mga requirements na yun, kailangan, kailangan yun. So, kung hindi ako nakapag-provide, but I have my reasons. Kaya yun, na-approved ako. Kaya, kaya na po yung bahalang dumiskarte kung paano nyo malulusutan ang ating mga consul. Okay? So, that's all guys. I picked up my passport the next day. And then went back to Macau and presented to the immigration. Kung bago pa lang kayo sa aking channel, remember to subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications sa mga bago nating videos. Marami pa po ako pwedeng i-share sa inyo like K-1 visa, extension of stay for a tourist visa, adjustment of status, and everything more on my adventure to the U.S. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!